Welcome everyone. Um, in this video on the accounting cycle, we're going to be looking at the classification of assets and liabilities on the balance sheet, as well as some measures of liquidity. So let's start with a quick definition of liquidity. Liquidity measures how quickly an item can be turned into cash. So since we're talking about classification of assets and liabilities, I'll tell you a quick story. Years ago when I was teaching a class, I asked them, what is a classified balance sheet? And one of the students, rightfully so, said, it's secret. And although it might make you chuckle for a second, that's how we're used to hearing the word classified. If something is classified, it's kept from certain people's eyes. However, in this case, classification or a classified balance sheet is where we are classifying the assets and liabilities as being either short-term or long-term. So if you look at this balance sheet here, you can look at the asset section and you can see we have certain assets that are classified as current and some assets that are classified as plant assets or long-term assets. Current assets are typically assets that are gonna be liquefied within a year and long-term or plant assets are assets that are not going to be liquefied within a year. So you can see things like furniture and your building, land, things like that would be classified as long-term. Liabilities, we would, we would do the same way. Current liabilities would be liabilities that you plan to pay off within a year. Long-term liabilities would be liabilities that you do not plan to pay off within the year. So now let's just put these in your notes. So if you have the lecture notes printed off, current assets are cash or assets that will be converted to cash or used up in one year or within the normal business operating cycle. So some examples, and we, we saw some on the prior screen, but some examples of current assets would be accounts receivable, cash, inventory, and prepaid expenses. Those are just four of many. Current liabilities would be debts or obligations that are due within one year or within the operating cycle. So some examples of current liabilities would be accounts payable, salaries payable, unearned revenue. Remember, we've talked about that one before. Unearned revenue is not a revenue yet. We've gotten cash in advance of us doing anything. So it's still unearned, meaning we owe someone something and taxes payable. So these would be examples of many current liabilities that we could see. Now let's look at the flip side. Let's look at long-term. So long-term assets are assets that are not converted to cash or used up within one year or an operating cycle. So again, some examples like we saw earlier, building, land, and equipment. Long-term liabilities are debts that are not due to be repaid in one year or within one operating cycle. And again, some examples would be like notes payable that are long-term and mortgage payable. So let's look at some more examples and see if we can classify them. So here I'm giving you a list of things and I want you to tell me what the classification is. In other words, is it a current asset? Is it a long-term asset? Is it a current liability? Or a long-term liability and then if it's an asset that's getting used up then tell me what it's called when it's used up so let me give an give you an example so if you had the word supplies on this list you would classify that as a current asset and because it is an asset that gets used up when it gets used up it's called supplies expense so Go ahead and pause the movie or the video now and go ahead and classify each one of these in the far left here as either a current asset, long-term asset, current liability, or long-term liability. And then if it's an asset in the far right corner, tell me what it's called when it gets used up. So press pause now. Go ahead and get this completed. Come back in a few minutes and we'll look at it together. All right, let's take a look 
at what we have here. So here are the answers. So buildings, of course, would be a long-term asset. Because it is an asset that gets used up over time, we depreciate this. Okay, we depreciate buildings, and it's called depreciation expense. Accounts payable would be a current liability. We expect to pay current accounts payable off within a year, if not sooner. Prepaid rent is a current asset, and as it gets used up, we call that rent expense. Accumulated depreciation is a tricky one. Remember, accumulated depreciation is a contra asset account, and it follows its companion asset account wherever it goes. So whether we're, we're depreciating a building or equipment, that accumulated depreciation account goes with it. So it would show up in the long-term assets section. Salary payable is a current liability. We plan to pay those within the current year. Unearned revenue would be a current liability. Cash would be a current asset. Accounts receivable would be a current asset. Equipment would be a long-term asset that we use up over time, and that's called depreciation expense. Prepaid utilities would be a current asset, and it, when it's used up, we call that utilities expense since, it, since this is prepaid utilities. And remember, you can have lots of prepaid accounts. You could have prepaid rent, and then the using up that, of that would be rent expense. So keep those accounts in mind. Hopefully account names are starting to become more familiar to you. So now let's talk about the balance sheet a little bit more in the two types, uh, two forms of a balance sheet that you might see. So we have the report form and the account form. The report form is the one you're going to see most often. It's the one that looks like a report, goes straight down the page. So assets, liabilities, owner's equity or stockholder's equity. The account form, if you notice, one way you might can remember which is which, for one thing, the report form looks like a report, and the account form looks like the accounting equation, okay, because we've got assets on the left and liabilities and owner's equity on the right. So it really looks a lot like the accounting equation, so that might help you remember the account form looking more like the accounting equation than the report form. All right, let's take a look at some measures of liquidity. The first one is the current ratio. The current ratio, it indicates a company's ability to pay its current liabilities with its current assets without having to liquidate any long-term assets. So this measures the liquidity of a business. So let's see the formula for a current ratio. We're gonna take our current assets and divide that by current liabilities. A good rule of thumb for a current ratio is somewhere around 1.5, 1 1.5, 1 somewhere around in there. You don't want it to be too high, but you don't want it to be too low either. But with any of these ratios, it's always important to investigate the industry averages. Um, so Walmart's industry would not, industry average would not be uh, comparable to a mom and pop convenience store ratio. Those would not be comparable. So you always want to go and seek out what the industry average is for whatever company you're looking at to see if they are in par with their industry. The next one is debt ratio. This indicates the proportion of a company's assets that are financed with debt. So it's a, it measures a company's ability to pay both their current and their long-term debt. So the equation for the debt ratio is total liabilities divided by total assets. Now, a rule of thumb for the debt ratio would be around 0.6, so about 60% of their assets being financed with debt. Now again, 0.8 does not mean that they're about to go out of business. Uh, that could be normal for their industry. So again, you have to go and investigate what everyone else in that industry is doing to ensure that they're in trouble or they're doing well, one or the other. So let's look at an example. So using the following account information, I want you to compute the current ratio and the debt ratio. So I'm giving you some information here. 
and I want you to pause the video and calculate the current end debt ratio. Come back and we'll check them together. All right, so if we go down the list here, our current ratio is current assets divided by current liabilities. So let's first look down this list at current assets. So going down the list, the first current asset I see there is prepaid rent for $2,000. The next one I see is supplies for $1,000, so now we're up to $3,000. The next one I see is accounts receivable for $6,000, so now we're up to $9,000. And the only other one left in that list is cash for 3,000. So our current assets are $12,000. So now let's look for current liabilities. So going down the list here, the first current liability I see is salary payable of 2,000. The next one would be accounts payable at 4,000. So now we're up to $6,000. And there's no other current liabilities. So we have 12,000 divided by 6,000, so our current ratio is 2.0, or 2.0. So that's a little higher than I told you the rule of thumb would be. It doesn't mean it's bad, it doesn't mean it's good. Again, we would wanna go and investigate the industry average to find out how close or how far away this company is. It could be that the industry average is 1.8 or 1.9, so we'd be right on par. If the industry average is 1.2, 1.3, then it could be that this company is hoarding cash a little bit. Uh, it doesn't appear that way in these numbers, but it could be instead of paying out dividends, the company is retaining their money. So as an investor, I might think, well, this might not be a great place for my money if I'm wanting to, to earn dividends. So you have to be careful with that. Make sure you review these carefully. The second one is the debt ratio. So the debt ratio is total liabilities divided by total assets. Well, we already have current assets and we already have current liabilities. So all we have to do now is to add the long-term stuff to our current stuff, okay? Except we're gonna reverse the numbers now. So liabilities will be on top and assets will be on the bottom. All right, so when you do that, so we had current assets of $6,000 and our long-term assets here Let's see. So on the new, on the denominator side, on the bottom, the total assets would have 12,000 in current assets, plus we would have 12,000 in equipment net. So again, net means depreciation has already been taken out. So we have total assets of $24,000. Total liabilities, we had $6,000 in current liabilities. Now we need to add our uh, long-term liability, and we only have one in that list, and it's at the very top, the note payable long-term of 9,000. So now we have 15,000 divided by $24,000, and that gives us a 62.5% debt ratio. Now that's right on par with what I told you earlier would be a good rule of thumb for the debt ratio. So we're probably pretty happy, but again, we'd wanna go and find out what the industry average is for whatever industry our company happens to be in. So you have to be really careful with these ratios when analyzing a company and the company's health. All right, so let's look at an example on preparing a classified balance sheet. I want you to get some practice at this. So I want you to use this information here. This is an adjusted trial balance. This is after the adjusting entries have been made, so just prior to the financial statements being created. And I'd like for you to create a classified balance sheet for the K. Wilson, um, the Wilson Trucking Company. Okay, so press pause on the video. Go ahead and complete the classified balance sheet. So you wanna have the asset section, the liability section, and the owner's equity section. And then come back and we'll take a look at it together. All right, hopefully you've had a chance now to complete the classified balance sheet. So let's take a look at this and what it would look like. All right, so here is the asset section. And you can see I have classified the current assets separately from the long-term assets or the plant assets. 
So in the current assets section, we have cash, accounts receivable, and office supplies. And those all sum to $28,500. In the long-term assets section, notice I have trucks at their cost, subtracted their accumulated depreciation, and now I have the book value of my trucks at $136,000. Land, which is not a depreciable asset, is on the books at cost of $85,000. So my total long-term or plant assets total $221,000, plus the current assets of $28,500 gives me total assets of $249,500. Now we can take a look at the liability and or the, the liabilities and equity section. So you'll notice the liability section is split into current and long term. So we had two current liabilities, accounts payable and interest payable. Those total to 16,000. And we had one long term liability, which was a note payable of 53,000. So our total liability summed to $69,000. And we only had one equity account. In this case, this is, looks like it was a sole proprietorship because we have a capital account. We don't have, we don't have a common stock or retained earnings. So this looks more like a, a sole proprietorship. Kay Wilson had capital in the business. And that's the only equity account we have at $180,500. So you add that to the total liabilities of $69,000 and we get $249,500. So that balances with our total assets. So if you're curious as to how we calculated the capital account, you can see that down here at the bottom. It's very similar to how we would calculate retained earnings. Instead of calling, calling it dividends, however, it's called withdrawals. So we have a beginning balance in the capital account of 175,000. Net income would make the capital account increase. So we have our revenues minus all the expenses, which gives us $25,500. And then the owner withdrew $20,000. So that's kind of like dividends, but dividends are paid to stockholders. Withdrawals would be just the owner withdrawing money. And that gives us an ending balance of $180,500. Now, I want you to keep this information handy, this balance sheet that you just created. And I want you to use that information to compute the current and debt ratios. And then I want you to think about what they mean. What are these ratios telling us? Okay, so press pause on the, on the video. Calculate these two ratios from the information you just just finished and then we'll come back and talk about them. All right, hopefully you've had a chance to now calculate these two ratios and think about what they mean. It's very, very important that we not only know how to calculate them, but we need to know how to understand them and use them. So let's take a look and what that would look like. So here I have calculated the current ratio at 1.78 and the debt ratio at 27.7%. So what does that current ratio mean? That 1.78 or a dollar and 78 cent. Well, let's think about the equation. Remember the equation is current assets divided by current liabilities. So if we get a dollar and 78 cent, that means for every $1 in current liabilities, I have a dollar and 78 cent to cover that. So that means I am not nearing a point that I would have to liquidate my long-term assets to be able to pay off my current debt as it comes due. So my liquidity is in a good situation here. Now let's look at the debt ratio. Uh, remember this is debt divided by assets. So total liabilities divided by total assets. And I get 27.7%. So this means that only 20, about 28% of my assets are financed with debt. Now remember, we know a good rule of thumb is about 60%. So depending on what our industry research showed us with regard to this ratio, this looks like that this company is in really good situation. So very, very little amount of the assets are financed with debt here. Okay, so more of the assets are owned by the owners than by the debtors. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something while watching. Please um, give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. 
Um, think about subscribing so that when I upload additional videos, you will get notified when they're posted. Also, visit me online at theaccountingdoctor.com. Post questions and comments. They're always welcome. Thanks again.